Greetings from Al Clonest. Welcome to this session on communication and English. We'll have regular sessions from now on. I'll be speaking slow so that most of you can comprehend and fathom it. I will also put another video where I'll be speaking faster. I sincerely thanks for tuning in and nice to know you have to forgo your FB, WhatsApp, Instagram. That's a great sacrifice. To err is human and to forgive is divine. This video is yet to be sent for proofreading and editing. This is the beta version. In case of any clarification, I would request you to seek a grammar expert. Let's kick off. Today's session, we're going to have a backup, a motivation. I'm going to explain to you why English. I would request you to test yourself to understand where you stand. Then I'll talk about the nitty-gritty of English grammar. Then I'll move on to vocabulary and how to use those words in conversation, how to use that in an email. Then I would request you to read a book. I'll give a small review of it. Last but not the least, it's Thirukkural, Pearls of Wisdom. Okay, let's back up. Diana Nayad, a 64-year-old American, has become the first person to swim from Cuba to Florida without the help of a shock cage. This is her fifth try. She arrived at the beach after 53 hours. That's really nice. That's the lady. You can go to the YouTube and have a look at her. 110 miles, 53 hours. 36 years after first attempt, never give up attitude. You don't have to swim all the way, you just have to learn your English. Now it's a question of uh, why another language, why English? Uh, honestly speaking, linguistic intelligence, it was developed by Howard Gardner. He came out of his multiple intelligence concept, uh, I mean the theory. So learning the language helps you not only to communicate, but also to think better and solve problems fast. It also enhances your creativity. Go all about, learn the language. Lack of communication and language skills, especially English, affects not only your employment, but also your salary and promotion, according to the Hindu. There's a report by this National Spoken English Skills Report it says Indian engineers are unable to get jobs because of their spoken English skills. Not only engineers, I'm seeing other professions also. The major uh, hurdles are fluency, sentence construction, pronunciation and basic grammar. And the study says better language skills, better pay and beautiful on-site opportunities too. Allegedly, you need to be fluent in English to put your kid in certain schools and without English, how do you teach them their homework? As a working, practicing professional, you might be a manager, leader, teacher, lecturer, professor, uh, CSCMS, CS, lawyer, entrepreneur, uh, scientist, whatnot. How do you think you can be a role model for other people, at least your subordinates? So speaking good language with good communication skills is pivotal so if you go for a group discussion you need english if you go for an interview you need english any conversation icebreaker you want to open up sometimes it needs language because people might not speak your mother tongue public speaking yes of course official meetings not all meetings happens in your mother tongue foreign clients Forget the Koreans and the Japanese, they also speak English today. Technical and scientific books are, most of them are in English. How do you comprehend them? You want to work abroad, you need English. Until we get everything in our mother tongue, which is in the offing, we would need English. So it's all about your linguistic intelligence, your strategic the way you discourse, your social linguistic skills, all these are called the communicative competence. We will be covering more of this in the future. The first thing 
I would request you to try this. Check whether these sentences are correct or wrong. I and my manager went for the meeting. Neither the students nor the teacher are there. 10 million people are suffering from XYZ disease presently. I suggest that he comes with you. The book comprises of 12 chapters. The sun rises in the east. It's raining for four hours. Can you suggest a good coach to me? He has a wrong misconception about English. They are wiser than us. You can test this. Go check with your English teacher or a grammar expert. Oh, all the sentences in the previous slide were wrong. Now let's kick start. The first thing I would like to tell you is about tenses. If you want to master tenses, first thing you need to know something called as verbs. Verbs can be regular verbs, irregular verbs. Uh, let's forget all these things. But verbs can undergo forms. What are the forms? Base form, right. Infinitive form, to write. Or sometimes they say write itself. Present participle form, writing. Past form, wrote. Past participle form, written. This kindly don't confuse it with tenses. This is not tenses. This is forms of the verb. Let's look at this. Begin, began. So what could be the next one? Buy, bought, bought, no. Cut, cut, cutted, cut, draw, drew, drive, drove, drived. I'm not sure. Feed, fed, find, found, fit, fit, fly, flew, give, gave, go, went. So what could be the answers? Okay, begin, began, begin, buy, bought, bought, cut, 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 draw, drew, drawn, drive, drove, driven, feed, fed, fed, find, found, found, fit, 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 fly, flew, flown. Give, gave, given, go, went, gone. So, if you don't comprehend at least 1000 verbs, to start with maybe 100 verbs, it would be a little difficult for you to converse nicely. Grow, grew, have, had, hit, hit, keep, kept, no, new, meet, met, pay, paid, set, set, shut, shut, speak, spoke, spend, spent, take, took, teach, taught. That's answer. You can take a photo shoot, go through it, memorize it. Uh, frequently looking at the slides also will help you. Okay, so there are, there are certain cases where the verbs really challenge us. One such verb is called lie. Oh, lie, lay, lane. Lie, lied, lied, lay, laid, laid. When you go to a doctor, the doctor will ask you to lie down. So that lie, the past and the past participle form is lay and laying. But sometimes you tell a lie. So that's lie, lied, lied to give a false statement. But the hen lays eggs. That's lay, laid, laid. We have a lot of challenges like this. Okay, now let's move to the vocabulary. I'm going to introduce a couple of words to you. Before that, I would request you to test your vocabulary. Just guess the meanings and uh, you can check with your dictionary. Homely, homily, dulcify, sexton, muse, mull, monoglot, polyglot, somnambulist, and ergo. I'm going to introduce a couple of new words and then I'll also put that in usage. The first word is procrastinate. It's a verb that means to postpone. Please watch this video now. Kindly don't procrastinate. This is how you'll use it. The next usage could be they are purposefully procrastinating this project. Usage, next usage. Why did you procrastinate? The next verb is venial. Venial is a forgivable fault. Usage, he has joined recently and misplaced the file. It's a venial crime. 
the parents excused their son's venial lies. How about daughters? Question mark. God will forgive your venial sins. The next word is inadvertent. It's an adjective. The meaning is inattention or unintentional. How do I use it? I have sent the wrong form. Please forgive me for the inadvertent act. The next usage is boys and girls inadvertently hurt each other. At least that's what the boys say. The third usage is this session has many inadvertent grammatical errors. Seek a grammar expert, please. The next word is a French noun, but it's quite frequently used in English. The word is bon voyage. It's also pronounced as bon voyage. It means happy journey. Nice to hear you're living to US. Bon voyage. Last day for my boss and I want to wish bon voyage to his career. Say bon voyage to your English problems. Listen to this video as many times as possible. I'm including an idiom. The idiom is learn the ropes. I'll put an exclusive video on idiom where you'll have a lot of clarification what this idiom, how it came into existence. Learn the ropes is an idiom that means learn the basics. How do I use it? If you want to speak good English, first learn the ropes. That means learn the basics. Managers don't want freshers to take too much time to learn the ropes. They want go-getters. I'm here to show the ropes so that you can learn the ropes and speak English fluently. So we have uh, five words, procrastinate, venial, inadvertent, bon voyage, learn the ropes. How do I use it? I've drafted a small mail with or without some mistakes. Thanks for all the support you have been extending to us for this niche project. We regret to inform that we procrastinated the last phase or we procrastinated in the last phase and we assume it is venial for new projects. We are focusing on quality. We apologize for all the inadvertent glitches caused by us and we thank you for your patience. We were given to misunderstand that the Japanese are heading home today and we wish them bon voyage. We have really learned the ropes from them. We look forward to work with you in the future too. Thank you. Now coming to the pronunciation, I'm going to introduce a couple of uh, uh, words to you. Uh, not this, because the word pronunciation itself is pronounced differently. It could be pronunciation, pronunciation. A lot of people argue with me whether it's a monk or a monk or a monk. There's a lot of uh, arguments that goes on actually. The British, the American, they pronounce differently. In the America itself, there are too many pronunciation. Yes, the British, the Scottish and other people. Oh, I take so many words. Okay, advertisement, advertisement, either, either, envelope, envelope, leisure, leisure, Mobile, mobile, neither, neither, niche, niche, often, often, privacy, privacy, semi, semi, schedule, schedule, tomato, tomato, vitamin, vitamin. Let's not go too much into this. But there are certain Indianish words I would request you to correct. The first word, most of most of the time I hear it as determine. I would sincerely request you to correct it as determine. Your attitude determines your altitude. Frequently in every office I say it's they I, I hear they say it's in the drawer. When you draw something, it's a drawer. The pen is in the drawer. Then I hear people say etukuti. It's not etiquette, it's etiquette, etiquette, polite behavior. We need professional etiquette to be successful. Then people say there are a lot of debris. I'm sorry, it's not debris. 
kindly change it to debris don't pronounce the yes the beautiful beach is full of debris finally there's always a challenge whether it is bury or bury or bury so let's put it in between in certain customs they bury the corpse and in certain other customs they cremate it go through this again and again so that you can correct yourself as I told you I'm going to give you a book it's a real old book but it's a beautiful book it's just 100 pages so you can easily read it the book is called the one minute manager it's written by Ken Blanchard and Spencer Johnson the author talks about three primary secrets the first one is one minute goal setting the author says 80% of your really important results will come from 20% of your goals which you have written it down actually. The second secret is all about praisings. One button you remove from Facebook, I think Facebook might collapse. It's the praising button, the like button. So do that in reality, please. The third one is all about your reprimand, your negative feedback. So feedback is a breakfast for champions, but don't be very offensive unless otherwise if it's an ethical issue or immoral issue, you can, where, where you can be a little assertive, not so aggressive. Kindly read this book. The book is really interesting. A last but not the least, as I said, it's Thiruvalluvar. Inna Seivarai Urutthal Jesus says if somebody slaps you, show the other cheek. Valvar says if somebody does wrong to you, make them feel shy by doing them a favor. That's really nice. So we have some action plan. One is to read the newspaper. I would hint on Hindu. Second is to watch an English channel. I would hint on NDTV. There's an app in your mobile called InShots. You can read it every day. If possible, I would also request you to go to the YouTube and watch TED videos. T-E-D, TED videos. Whether you're right or wrong, you'll be criticized anyway. Some people are born for that. I sincerely thank you for watching this video. Keep smiling and keep shining. I'll be looking forward to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.